Good afternoon, everyone. How y'all doing? Today, I wanted to talk to you about us trying to kind of revamp the outside of our house and starting specifically with our front entryway. And But before I bring you around to the front of our door, I wanted to kind of start here because this is where the kind of stucco meets uh, wood siding that we have. Our house was built in 1978 and this is wood siding all on the front and we have and if I, i'm sure the camera picks it up where we did not paint all the way to the end i wanted our house to be this pale ever so pale yellow with white trim and when we painted our shed i knew that the color of the shed that was exactly what i wanted our house to look like Fast forward a few years, as my husband was taking the stucco off and we began looking for the paint, we couldn't find it. We couldn't find it anywhere. Before I go any further, you are probably going to hear helicopters and airplanes. We are right in the flight path of them fighting fires up in the foothills. We have three fires burning right now, uh, so it's pretty significant and they're kind of pretty much flying round the clock as the sun is up. So if you hear that, uh, that that's what they're doing. They're, they're fighting fires up there and hopefully they can get it contained here pretty soon. As we were looking for the paint, we couldn't find the paint, the color, the specific color of the shed. And wouldn't you know, we went through at least 10 samples, maybe even a dozen of different yellows. And every time I put it up on the wall, I know, nope, I, I know that's not the one. It's, it's too bright. It has too much green. Um, you know, I didn't want it to be jarring. So my husband was cleaning out a part of the garden shed and he came across this little sample of paint and he says, I don't recognize the name. And as I opened it, the, the what was left of the paint almost looked creamy white, but the lid had a, just an ever so slight color of yellow. And I said, I think this is the shed. So we stirred it up a little bit. I put it up on the wall and I'm like, that's the color. So once we found the color, we knew we needed satin for the wood trim, the, the wood siding, um, semi-gloss for the trim, which is Swiss Coffee Bear. And the, for the stucco, we needed a flat. We got all the paint and we started really from the entryway and we're gonna get the front of the house done and then we'll go to the back of the house. But I wanted to, as I talked to you about our stucco, so you can see where uh, the front part has been painted already. We've had about, I don't know, eight, do you think, stucco companies come out? And not one company would touch our house. I will insert a photo of what, there's a small portion that my husband has yet to grind and all these little scallops here, the stucco came out about an inch, inch and a half. I'll try and measure it with a coin so you can see how, how, how much it was. I wanted this taken off, but all the stucco companies said, nope, they weren't gonna touch taking it off. They would just fill in more stucco. I knew that wasn't gonna be a good look for our house. I didn't want this much stucco on the outside of our house. So we have opted to try and tackle this ourselves. Just with the small portion that my husband's been able to do, it has literally changed my view of the house. It seems like no matter how much I try and put my garden together, I always know that this is gonna be a backdrop and it is not appealing to anybody, especially me. But let me bring you around to the front to show you exactly where we've started. So as you look forward to our front uh, door, um, ugh, it's a little breezy. We have started with the trim. As soon as we get all the trim done, my husband will put um, all the gutters up. And uh, this is a better look of our entryway than what it did look. We still need to finish painting the front doors, which is the Swiss coffee. And as we come inside into the entryway, you can tell that the ceiling here of our entryway hasn't even been touched. My husband has always wanted to pull the rocks out and plant. And I have always chosen to not do that, specifically because the maple our Japanese maple right here to the left of me hadn't grown out enough 
that they would both be shaded. So this would be completely shaded, the one here at the topiary to my left, and this area would be full sun. And I kind of wanted it to look a bit uniform, but now that the tree has grown so much, both these areas are really pretty much shaded. I mean, this little dappled uh, sun that you see here, filtered sun, it's, um, that's not enough to uh, hurt the impatience or the lamium. What we've done is taken four lamium. I would have loved to have just lined the whole thing, uh, but my budget said, let's start with four. <laughs> and then I uh, filled in the middle with impatience. And also you can tell this side we've ran drip, but this side we haven't converted the sprinkler um, on this side. Uh, to drip quite yet. I wanted to also let you know that the topiary forms under here, I purchased when we lived in Ventura County when Costco was called Price Club. That's how long ago uh, I bought the forms. And they're three different sizes. And I started each of these topiaries with just a small little ivy. Any of you who've grown ivy knows that it's a fast growing plant. And within a matter of time, uh, we were able to wrap these up. In fact, as I trim these each spring, because that's when they put their big flush of growth out, I can't tell you how many times I have actually cut the wire inadvertently. And actually, they don't have as many lights on them as I normally like. I like to put those cluster lights around each of these. And normally through the seasons, uh, I've done red, white, and blue, and... Um, uh, this year, I think I'd like to try some fall lights around here that uh, I saw at a store recently. However, when I have had to pull the lights out, I didn't want to tell you if any of you ever do a topiary with IV on a form, I was literally ripping it to shreds to where my husband came home from work one day and said, what did you do to this poor plant? It was pretty much almost wood. It had a few little leaves left. And I said, well, I'm going to give it a chance and see if it grows back. And each time that I've had to rip the lights off and the leaves come back, it doesn't damage the plant. It looks a little sad for a few days, but they all, it all grows back. Uh, but I have had these for well over 20 years. And um, I don't know, I think maybe I've had to replace one plant just one time. This one actually came, and he's the most sad looking one. Uh, from Ventura County. These two I planted when I moved here. But I just wanted to hopefully by showing you our entry you can get a better understanding of my vision of what our house will hopefully look like someday and that when um, as I show you our gardens from time to time that the backdrop will look so much more beautiful as opposed to seeing the stucco the way it is. So um, he did finish the trim here, but we have to redo the door. And we have not yet uh, picked up a door handle. And that is because I, we can't find a door handle that I like, that he likes, that is this size apart. The, the bolt is a little bit different from where the handle sits. So knowing that this is going to have, he's going to have to have the door open. He's going to have to chisel out the new deadbolt. Um, I'll make sure I put in a photo of what our weather will be next week. I know that the door will have to sit open for the paint of the door and also for the new door handle. And I believe it's going to be 119 next week. Actually, for the, for the foreseeable future, it's going to range from 108 to 119. And um, yeah, I don't want the front doors open. <laughs> <laughs> while our air conditioning is running. So before I say goodbye, I just wanted to go over a few of the decor items that I hear, have here in our front entryway. I typically would love to have fresh flower wreaths on our, on our front door. That's not realistic uh, really for most people, but definitely for us with our summers as hot as they are. But I really search for as much clearance as I can because I... Um, when you start picking up decor stuff, it can add up very quickly. These, although they don't look super pretty when you get them, you do have to fluff them out. I picked them up for $11 each. 
Also, I wanted to say, when you guys are going to like home decor boutiques, and uh, my best friend, we have a couple of friends that we like to go shopping together up and down uh, the state. And a lot of your home decor stores, sorry, <laughs> a lot of your home decor stores will have garden stuff in there. And recently, one of the stores here in town, it's called Judy's, I think Judy's Home Decor. She was doing a huge clearance of many items uh, because they have to gear up for Christmas and fall. This is a little burlap sack that I picked up for 50 cents. This was, happened to be on clearance. I don't remember, I think it was $10, uh, very, very heavy. Um, and then of course, uh, if you like the Luminara candles, which are sold at Pottery Barn for an arm and a leg, you can always go to Home Goods or TJ Maxx and get them for even more than 50, sometimes 70% off. Same thing here, I picked this up there. I think this, by the time I picked it up on clearance, it was $1.50. The cherry blossoms were on clearance. I picked up the new pillow. Um, cover for three dollars and it's a beautiful beautiful pillow cover this we painted black because it sat right underneath our lantern here oh also this is something else my husband's going to do but we wanted to put it up so you could see it this will not hang on the outside my i feel so blessed and lucky that my husband knows how to do so many things he is going to run the electrical all the way down bring it out here to the bottom and insert a, an exterior outlet for us. And then of course, all, all these are on timers anyway, and they come on at dusk and they turn off at daybreak. And I like that when my kids come home from work, if they're working late, uh, my, our oldest uh, works graveyard and he always comes home in the dark. And I like to know that our front entryway is lit up for both of them when they come home. But this will all be gone and you won't see this. I hope that if you close your eyes and don't pay attention to the ceiling <laughs> and uh, you're able to see what potentially our house could look like once my husband's able to tackle the rest of the stucco and get the trim done. It's a lot of work for just one guy. and. Uh, I think sometimes I'm more of a hindrance than a help. So I'll, I'll be his errand person and get him whatever he needs, but the, all this is out of my wheelhouse. Just with this small little area, it has been so exciting. I, you know, my husband kind of smiles at me with a little side eye, like, you're, you're really overexcited about this. And I am, I am. He, when we originally, he wanted me to come look at this house and I said, I don't want to buy the house. I don't like the stucco. <laughs> he said, no, 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 don't look at the stucco. You have to go inside. You're really going to like the inside of the house. So he knows I've wanted to have the outside done for a long time, and I'm just super excited, so glad he's willing to tackle it for me. It's unfortunate that the stucco companies don't want to help, but I understand. Tons of labor. I hope you guys come back soon. I don't think I'm going to be doing any planting in the next few weeks with the temperatures reaching almost 120 degrees. So I hope your summer isn't nearly as hot as ours and I will see you soon. Thank you guys so much for watching. Bye.